In Rio, Brazil's so-called marvellous city, there's a place they call Cracolandia. From the main road, the track hints at no more than an abandoned wasteland. But once inside, a scene of unrelenting deprivation soon greets you. Some quarrel briefly over clothes as the handouts begin. And as word spreads that the food run is back, out of the shadows come the countless grateful people of Cracolandia. The old, the young, the mothers-to-be. The very people Brazil's likely next president, Jair Bolsonaro, calls vagabonds living a great life. This is what it looks like when a nation so ravaged by economic decline fails its most desperate. This lawyer, together with a local church, organizes the fortnightly aid run. Na realidade, essa cena mostra o total abandono, o descaso das nossas autoridades, do governo brasileiro, uh, com a pobreza. Na realidade, essas pessoas são usuárias de crack. Mas elas estão. O crack é só uma forma delas de sobreviverem a uma situação de miséria. Porque o crack não leva à miséria, a miséria leva ao crack. If the state isn't hands-on here, others are. But these interventions are fleeting. And when we venture further inside at midnight, we find a mini shanty town bordering the rail tracks and rat-infested sewers, where some of the 400 or so residents queue beside the patchwork of crack shops and shabins. Like Maria Zill, mother of seven, who tells us she sells junk to survive. And 39-year-old Michelle de Matas Ferreira, one year here, six years on crack. How would you describe life here? Nossa. Aqui não é vida. Não é vida, não tem vida aqui. Aqui é um lugar, um submundo. Tem piorado muito. Muito, 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 muito. Muito mesmo. É, a cada dia que passa tem mais. As pessoas chegam aqui bonitinha, aí vai, dá um push e vai embora. Daqui a pouco vem, já passa a noite inteira. Daqui a pouco vem, já tá ficando aqui direto e... Does the presidential election mean anything to you, mean anything to the people here? Nada. Well, we've just left Cracolandia and that was, without question, a profoundly shocking experience to see this group of people almost completely abandoned to their own devices and in turn forming this mad mini society, all of their own, an almost parallel universe revolving around one thing, crack. If the economy has left these and others even more exposed, most blame the traditional political class. So the outsider, would-be redeemer, Bolsonaro, is riding a wave of political despair. And, like the car owner who's crazy for Jesus, something else. The growing power of Brazil's evangelicals. In Rio's ministry of the all-powerful God, Pastor Vlamir Gomes Amaral leads his committed congregation in a three-hour service. Among them are many ex-addicts, including Claudia Maria Freya, one-time resident of Cracolandia. Bolsonaro é um cara que que vem né para revoluir, para mudar. Eu creio que ele vem mudar, né? Ele seja um bom presidente, né? Melhor do que os outros estamos apostando nisso, né? More than 22% of Brazilians now identify as evangelicals, up from 7% in 1980. Many weary of Brazil's corruption and rampant crime are now embracing Bolsonaro's draconian agenda, however deeply intolerant it is. I'd like to ask you as a Christian how you can support a man like Jair Bolsonaro, who shows such little compassion, seemingly, for the most vulnerable. O amor ele não passa a mão na cabeça. O amor ele também repreende. Entendeu? E eu creio que que com o pulso firme alguma coisa vai mudar até para os adictos, os viciados que estão dentro da Cracolândia. Blind faith or informed optimism in the city of Copacabana, Cracolândia and beyond. 
Brazil's dramatic political shift is underway.